Urea cycle is the process of removal of ammonia from the human body. Ammonia is an end product of protein metabolism. It is toxic to the human body, especially the central nervous system. Therefore, it has to be removed from the blood by converting to a harmless water-soluble compound called urea. This process of detoxification of ammonia is called the urea cycle. If we look at the structure of urea, the two nitrogen atoms in urea is derived from two different sources, one from ammonia and the other directly from aspartate. The carbon part comes from carbon dioxide. Urea synthesis is a five-step cyclic process with five distinct enzymes. The first two reactions occur in the mitochondria because the required enzymes are present in the mitochondria whereas the remaining cycle takes place in the cytosol. Now, let's look at the two steps that occur in the mitochondria. The first step is the formation of carbamoyl phosphate. Carbamoyl phosphate is synthesized from ammonia and carbon dioxide in the presence of the enzyme carbamoyl phosphate synthetase 1. Carbamoyl phosphate synthetase 1 requires activation by N-acetyl glutamate, which is the positive allosteric activator of this enzyme. N-acetyl glutamate is synthesized from acetyl coenzyme A and glutamate by N-acetyl glutamate synthase. So this step consumes 2 ATP and is said to be an irreversible and rate limiting step of this cycle. The next step is the formation of citrulline. The carbamoyl part of carbamoyl phosphate is transferred to ornithine by the enzyme ornithine transcarbamoylase to form citrulline. Ornithine and citrulline are basic amino acids that participate in the urea cycle, moving across the inner mitochondrial membrane via a co-transporter. The following three reactions now occur in the cytosol. The third step of this cycle is the synthesis of argininosuccinate. The enzyme argininosuccinate synthetase combines citrulline with the amino acid aspartate to form argininosuccinate. As discussed earlier, aspartate here provides the second nitrogen that is ultimately incorporated into urea. It is important to note that the third and final ATP in the cycle is utilized here. The next step is the cleavage of argininosuccinate. The intermediate argininosuccinate is cleaved by the enzyme argininosuccinate lyase to yield arginine and fumarate. Fumarate produced in the urea cycle is hydrated to malate that can be utilized directly or indirectly in other metabolic pathways. The fifth and final step is the formation of urea. Here the enzyme arginase cleaves arginine to ornithine and urea. Ornithine is transported back into the mitochondrion in exchange for citrulline where it can be used for another round of the cycle. This last step occurs almost exclusively in the liver because the enzyme arginase is present primarily in the liver. So whereas the other tissues such as the kidney can synthesize arginine by these reactions, but only the liver can cleave the arginine and thereby synthesize urea. Urea which is formed then passes into the blood and is transported to the kidneys where it is filtered and excreted in the urine. A portion of the urea diffuses from the blood into the intestine. Here it is decomposed by intestinal bacterial urease to carbon dioxide and ammonia. This ammonia is partly lost in the feces and is partly reabsorbed into the blood. Through the portal circulation, majority returns to the liver where it is detoxified back to urea, while a small portion of ammonia goes back into the systemic circulation. The urea excreted each day by a healthy adult is about 30 grams and accounts for about 90% of the nitrogenous excretory products produced by our body. And by the way, did you know that the urea cycle was the first metabolic cycle to be discovered? It is known as the Krebs-Hanselite cycle, named after the scientists. 
as ornithine is the first member of the reaction sequences, it is also called as the ornithine cycle.